It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes, it's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we are diving into Blade's apparent period piece movie. Like, <laughs> Appa- Apparently, we are. Yes. I don't know if it... We have a lot of rumors this week, so uh, if if this is a uh, not news to you guys, great. But I'm I'm we're gonna we're gonna throw into some rumors here because um what, what are those those scoopers on 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 Twitter or X or whatever they're they're coming out with some stuff. Officially though, Daredevil gets born again with a TV showrunner and directors. Mike, they've Ooh. already got some replacements in mind. The Lantern Show. Do you remember this? The Green Lantern Show, but it's just called Lanterns because was it, was this the HBO Max like this is the um, new one, Bad this, Robot one. This is James Gunn's Lantern oh Show. Oh my god, I can't even I can't even keep track. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what we'll talk. It's starting to look. It's starting. It looks like it's going to start pre production soon. So maybe we'll have more details on this Gunniverse, if you will, uh, Gun and Saffronverse, uh, and more in today's episode. I mean, we we've put so much effort into projects that have never even gotten off the ground but officially announced mm-hmm. and end up getting canceled that it's like they never happen but we chris we literally yeah. spent hours of our lives talking about these things and then in the future no one will even no one will even know that they nearly never happened <laughs> oh yeah absolutely and and what's going to be great is you know uh, I don't ever recommend people going back and listening to our show historically, but boy, would you hear how many times that we've talked about things or had hype for things that just fluttered off into the wind somewhere else that never to be seen or heard from again. So I disagree. I think everyone should go back through our catalog, okay. listen to everything at least twice, because that's the only way you'll be able to know in the future if an AI... Um, comes in and just replicates yep. us. So we're gonna need those uh, diligent fans and their, you know, very yep. very accurate ears to tell the difference. That's right. Uh, and you know what? That's a great time, Mike, to remind people we are live streaming on YouTube uh, when we do these now on Sunday. There is no set time, so don't put something in your calendar by any means. But if you're listening to us uh, now or you're watching us on YouTube, leave us uh, leave us a like, give us a subscribe because we're gonna be here every week. And if you're subscribed, you get a notification when we're streaming, so you might be able to catch a little bit of these tidbits a little early. Well, if you're I, to I thought I, I thought I thought I saw that YouTube was working on this new feature that when you tell people to like click the bell or ring the bell, they mm-hmm. were going to use like AI to know if the video is saying like, "Hey, ring that bell," and they were going to like jingle a little like bell in the corner of your video. Oh, yeah. So if we just say like bell, 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 bell over and over right. again, is it going to be like when you send an emoji to somebody with the screen effect on iOS? It's it, just like all over the screen. In eight more years, we'll come back and listen to, to you saying bell a bunch of times and see if YouTube rings <laughs> that bell for us. Oh my God, we this won't even be a thing in eight years. Yep. Just like eight years ago, people like put all of those clickable annotations over every uh-huh. single pixel of a video and they were turning it into like those like choose your own adventure games oh, yeah. that that was that was wild even even at the time i was just like there's no way that this is here forever people are gonna have these janky old videos saying click the screen now and it's just like click my hand mm-hmm. click my face like no that doesn't exist anymore yeah i know I, a lot of people pranking you right click these nuts is what those little kids were putting on oh, YouTube eight years ago. oh Chris. got them got them didn't even see it coming <laughs> Um, but, uh, let's get into, we are, we are in, um, we are in October and the end of October here. This is the last Mm -hmm. week of October and right before October ends, Mike, um, I hate to tell people this, but it is your birthday coming up in November and, and I believe, I don't think this is tied to your birthday, but maybe it was, I don't know, but you took a little trip this weekend. Yeah, uh, it, it historically usually is tied to my birthday, but not this year. Uh, just conveniently close enough. Uh, we took our pilgrimage down to Disneyland, about an hour away from our place, and it was great fun. Uh, I hadn't been there for about four years, so a lot had kind of changed and updated. And the biggest change is last time I was there, I did get a chance to see Galaxy's Edge, but now I finally got to ride the big ride, Rise of the Resistance. 
And uh, Chris, I told you I'd come on the show this week and tell you about it because uh, you are a little bit more cautious about maybe rides that fling you around. Well, or, dro- it's drops. Or it's, drop it, you. it's dark drops. I can't dark sudden drops that are like the bane of my existence. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. when you were in Disney World, you uh, you neglected to take on this ride, and I, I'll I'll let you know, Chris. The the drop that does exist in Rise of the Resistance, I could only define as a baby drop. Okay. Like it, yeah. is, yeah. it is. It is. It is total. Like uh, my my wife uh, described it very well to myself. She got car sick in a backseat of an Uber on the way to the airport a couple of weeks ago. And that's how sensitive her constitution is. And uh, she uh, was fine during this. It was like yeah. no big deal. Yeah. And I don't think it would make me sick. It's just one of those things like when it says there's a drop, I'm like, do I trust this? But at the same time, like I always say, my, my mental capacity is there are five year olds on this ride. I can do this ride. <laughs> yeah, and I won't spoil it for you, but the the drop and well, you know, because I think you watched it on uh, on YouTube or a ride yeah. a ride along. It's very telegraph, but it's actually kind of fun the way it's telegraph because you're like, oh no, it's I'm about to be dropped. Um, but we went on the ride, and the friend that we went with, who'd been on it before, let us know that there was a couple components of the ride not working quite right. And the only thing I really knew about this ride outside of the context of what's in it is that it breaks down all the time. And I don't know if it's just because it's so complex and there's so many moving parts, like literally and kind of figuratively of just getting things around. And, and, uh, but of course the ride was broken for half of the day, the first half of the day that we were there yesterday. And and this is one of those, so people don't know, this isn't like a normal ride uh, at Disney. This is one of the newer ones where they use the magnetic tra- tracks under the under the floor, like Ratatouille does, right? Um, so, yeah. and then there's also multiple levels, doesn't it? It pulls you onto like a thing and rises you up and down. Yeah, multiple there's definitely. There's definitely levels to it. There's some like trickery where you get into a pod and then they they move you in real life, but then trick you into thinking that you're kind of not moving, but are moving. It's kind of hard to explain. So it's like you enter you enter this door one way, then you exit, and you're totally in, in a different location. It was really fun. There's lots of fun kind of imagineering stuff uh, going on here. Uh, but I was a little bummed because uh, the things that were broken – and I was described to what they were supposed to be. I was like, oh, man, that stuff would have been really cool. But overall, the ride was cool. I was glad that we got to ride it because, like I said, it was, like, closed for, like, half of the day. And then we were checking the app constantly, waiting for it to open up. And then, luckily, I checked the app just at the right time where it had just opened back up. And the wait times were, like, maybe 20 minutes. And they were 20 minutes for, like, four seconds, you know, mm-hmm. until, like, the yeah. rest of the park ran over there. But Rise of the Resistance was great and fun. And Good. then... Uh, to contrast the most modern ride that they have, we rode one of their oldest rides, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Toad's Wild Adventure or Mysterious Adventure or Crazy Adventure. No, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And that was fantastic. That was so fun. Uh, it's just it, it it's such a it's a ride contained in such a tight spot that they they really use every single square inch of whatever blackout neon warehouse that they've made. Um, it it's just hilarious. The subject matter is like so crazy for kids, but it's such a legacy ride. They leave it in there. Like you literally go to hell in the ride and then it shoots you out at the end. It, it's, 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 um, it's amazing. You got to ride Mr. Toads. If you ever get a chance to go to a Disney park, I think they, they don't, they don't have, have them at Disney world. I'm pretty sure oh, because I've never, I've never, I've never ridden it. Um, oh, you're so, going to have to come out and see me and then we yeah, can go do it. Yeah. Cause I, 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 I bel- yeah, I've never, never even I've heard of it, but I was like, I could not figure out how to get it there. And I'm like, Oh, I'm pretty sure it's only Disney. Yeah. Uh, Disney land. So I, I did get, to, I get, I did get to eat my first Ronto wrap too. Oh yeah. yeah. It was pretty good. I'm a fan of coleslaw on hot dogs. And then, you know what? Most of the time the bun on a hot dog to me is kind of an afterthought. So the fact that it's replaced with like a pita thing was mm-hmm. like awesome. I was like, Oh, like yeah. I'm just thinking of a million ways I could jazz up a Ronto wrap, man, throw some like fries into that Ronto wrap. Yep. Maybe some sort of like, maybe red type of like spiciness that goes over the top of it could be really good. Um, great. Awesome. Ronto wraps. But that's besides the point, you know, Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there, but the most, uh, the most pressing date coming up, which might not happen just yet, depending on when you're listening to this episode is Halloween is on the horizon. So it's that time of the month where you start to watch spooky things or maybe finishing up spooky things and quickly transitioning to the holiday stuff. But I, I caught a movie from technically 2007 called trick, uh, 
Trick or treat. It's just called trick or treat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't church it up. We uh, yeah, we know what it is. Well, apparently I was I was looking it up. It was supposed to be just more traditionally like trick or treat, but somebody else already nabbed that name, so they changed it to an R, which was pretty clever. But this is kind of a fun movie um, in a sense of if you've ever caught like those like New Year's Eve or Valentine's Day movie where it's just like um, kind of a few different stories that kind of coalesce towards the end. Uh, this is kind of like the horror version of that where you're dropped in on this like small town during Halloween night. You get to see like three or four kind of different stories that happen across the town with like vampires or kind of slasher werewolves like zombie type of stuff and then there's this like little boy with a bag on his head kind of like demon that is kind of like cross pollinating across all of them but it's really really fun um it's labeled as kind of like a a horror comedy um but i would say it's almost a horror with like comedic elements in a way it's not like a not necessarily, I guess, as straightforward as like Cabin in the Woods kind of might be a little bit more comedic, but uh, it was fun, and I can tie it to our show pretty directly because uh, Anna Paquin stars in one of the stories. Brian Cox, who I, I forgot Two X-Men was not, people right away. Not, yeah, not just in Succession, also X-Men, and then also the writer-director, Michael Daughtry, has... Uh, cross-pollinated with a lot of stuff that we talk about on the show, like Godzilla, uh, King of Monsters. He directed that. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, unfortunately, X-Men Apocalypse, but also Krampus. I love Krampus. Uh, well, Superman Returns, which I feel like we haven't touched on he, in a while, and then also X2. He he did X-Men Apocalypse with Brian Singer. I blame Brian Singer. Uh, <laughs> but I just pulled pull up Trick or Treat on, on Google. I know you told me about this. So I pulled it up. Um, it's also got Dylan Baker, who was the lizard uh, in Raimi Spider Man movies. Kind of, he was a professor with one arm. Oh yeah, you're right. He plays a really fun uh, character yeah. in this. Movie. And then it says Leslie Bibb, but I'm pretty sure Leslie Bibb was in Iron Man One as the reporter he sleeps with, where he's uh, what's her name. Um, Pepper was like, I'm also responsible for taking out his trash kind of thing. So, oh, it's it's got to be that Brian Singer kind of yeah. Marvel radius around this. But yep. th- this this is a fun movie just to dive into. It's nothing so grotesque that if you're like a scaredy baby, you're not going to be able to watch this. But there's some like silly things in here that you can um you can press on forward. So uh, yeah, give it a shot. Trick or treat. And then last up, uh, Chris, you were. You were uh, lucky enough to supply me with um, a viewing of Five so, Nights at Freddy's. Well, well, I don't think you've caught it yet, though. I've not. Uh, and I'm not going to because I don't care. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is not a game. I, I, number one, I, I'm not a horror movie person. It's never jive with me. Just don't watch them. Um, never played the games either. Missed out on this. However, I, I will say, Mike, I provided you a copy. But this movie is in theaters and streaming, I believe, on Peacock is what you said at the same time. Mm-hmm. So this is, a, um, I guess, a pandemic model still for this show. But before you get into it, that is um, the highest live action adaptation for a video game movie to ever hit theaters. So despite it being on Peacock... People are going to the theaters to watch this movie right now. Um, and I think that's great uh, for people who do enjoy it. So um, continue with yeah. telling how it is. But I, that, I mean, just, just that, that the numbers alone are, are mind blowing for this movie in theaters for when you could just yeah. pay five bucks and watch it on streaming. Yeah, I suppose your experience may vary depending on where you live and what theater you like to go to. But I watched this in the comfort of my own home, and I'm glad I did because after kind of looking up kind of different stories or or crowd reactions to this movie, uh, apparently there's been a high probability that you could have been caught in a movie theater with children in a sense of they were hooping and hollering at the screen, yelling memes at the screen and lines from the video game and just being like really weird, awkward, theater going guests um a lot of people i and i know this only because a lot of people were whipping out their phones and like recording the screen while they're in there and i was like if i was in one of these theaters i would have killed myself i would have begged for bonnie to come out of the screen and bite me in half because it sounds like it, it's a nightmare if you're kind of targeting that video game it, audience it's the spookiest was, movie mike for you <laughs> because it, it, it's your nightmare come to life uh, but the, I, I guess the, the best thing I could say about this movie is the wife and I sat down, watched it, and it held our attention uh, enough to where we didn't pick up our phones once. Mm-hmm. So I think that's pretty good. Um, uh, 
Uh, I am kind of interested in the Five Nights at Freddy's lore just in general, not because I've played the games, but I've watched people play the games. Uh, there, there are people that have put together kind of like lore explanation videos, and it's just kind of silly to go down the rabbit hole sometimes, like on your lunch break. You know, you pop up one of these YouTube videos like, oh, what's this crazy universe with like mascots and stuff and animatronics? And, you know, if, if you can really just kind of turn your brain off, which I, is a thing that I hate when people tell me to do that, this is definitely one of those movies where you just got to sit back, let it wash over you, and just see the really impressive uh, puppetry. Really, that's what it is. The Jim Henson Company were the ones that created all these animatronics. As as far as I know, the, the kind of uh, beating drum by the PR mar companies is that this is there's like no like quote CG for the characters. It's all puppetry. If there's any really big movements, it was people in the costumes. And mm -hmm. beyond that, it was maybe controlled by like rods or like... Um, like ropes and stuff like that. And they look so impressive. It almost takes me out of it because it looks like they're literally pulled straight from the video game. So it's almost like they don't match to the real world because they look too similar like they do from the video games. I don't really know if that's necessarily a criticism, but it's just very, very fine craftsmanship on these puppets. So I could recommend this one, but I couldn't recommend anyone go to the theater, I think, to see this unless you're some sort of mega fan mm. uh, there's apparently there's a cameo from a youtuber in this that a lot of people freaked out over uh, but they freaked out so much that you if you were in that certain type of theater you would have missed all of their lines in the scene because people were like freaking yeah. out and rolling on the ground and stuff uh so yeah you might have to watch this, watch this one at home just uh just for your sanity but like weirdly enough i would watch i would watch more of these i mean the games get progressively weirder with their lore and background and I, I, I think I would just be a glutton for, for more of that on Peacock. So there there you go. That's my pitch to the studios to keep making these, but please just put them out on streaming. I don't want to go to the theater for these. Yeah, well, I don't. I mean, if it's, it's making too much money for you to get your wish now, Mike, so um, <laughs> that, that's the way it is. But, yes, that, that is absolutely out. One of the things I was going to say um, that I had on in the background this week, and I forgot. I messaged you the, uh, an article because I, I just couldn't believe it, Mike, was Casper. The 1994, 95 movie Casper, mm -hmm. the, the Friendly Ghost, um, starring Bill Pullman, Christina Ricci, and a CGI ghost. And at one point, uh, early on in the movie, there's actually one of the Monty Python Eric Idols. Um, there's a Ghostbusters uh, reference early on, uh, I think twice, with Dan Aykroyd showing up as a cameo. I was like, I was like, I can't believe how many cameos they got in this little movie. <laughs> uh, and then later on, um, when Bill Pullman's, um, I guess, I think he's, he, I think he's like not infected or but he's like possessed by a ghost. Um, he, mm -hmm. he sits up multiple times. They got Clint Eastwood, Rodney Dangerfield, um, Mel Gibson, and then the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. In it, I was like, uh, oh yeah, that's from like a there's it's like a mirror kind yeah, of he, gag, yeah right? yeah yeah he's like, like shape shifting or something yeah he's like the he, I think someone's like one of the ghosts is in him and every time he like raises his head up from splashing water on his face he's a different person and I was mm -hmm. like. I, I, I just can't fathom a movie right now, Mike, in our, our day and age that would literally have, again, the, the, the spectrum that is Clint Eastwood and Roddy Dangerfield, right, kind of cameoing. And then uh, Mel Gibson, except for Deadpool. Deadpool is like the only movie or anything with Ryan Reynolds. I'm like, you could pull off any cameo you want with him because he's such a likable dude. So um, I, I thought that was really fun. So um, don't don't forget don't forget uh, don't forget Casper in your, your Halloween watching movies. I have a Christmas playlist, but not a Halloween playlist. Uh, so it's just not, it's not on me, but, um, I'm going to jump in the, one of the things I've been doing, uh, is, has been reading, partially reading, partially listening because I, I traveled for work last week. I was gone all week, uh, to a, a book called the reign of the MC MCU, the reign of Marvel studio. Sorry. is what's officially called. I pulled up my article here written by, and I just told you this, Mike, and I've lost it. Joanna Robinson, Dave Gonzalez and Gavin Edwards. And it's essentially a, a history of Marvel Studios. And if that sounds familiar to you, Mike, what did we do, I guess, in 2013 uh, as a collaboration before we even had this podcast? Uh, oh, yeah. We made some fun little, like, infographics. Infographics. In uh, Marvel. Yeah. So uh, one of the cool – it's not one of the cool things. One of the things about this, it literally goes back in time to, like, when, when Stan Lee created Marvel Studios in the 70s and – um, they couldn't make anything because everything was was awful. And then the hiring or the takeover by Ike Perlmutter in the 90s with and then hiring Avi Arid, who was a toy designer, Mike. The guy who 
single-handedly created and ruined Spider-Man movies was a toy designer years before he <laughs> did this. Um, it, there's this information that I never, I, I probably could have found if I researched, but it's all compacted in here. Then eventually, obviously, it gets to, you know, Marvel. Uh, one person at Marvel, I forget his name, um, uh, who, who went to uh, Perlmutter and said, look, if we create our own studio, we can control the characters and how we portray them to sell more toys because that's all... Perlmutter ever when he owned Toy Wiz. That's all he ever wanted to do was make these movies to tell toys, Mike. And I never, I mean, it's always been there. We've always maybe mentioned it, but I've never really thought about that, right? Like every Marvel movie since the 90s was made to sell more toys. Um, and that's all they ever did. So, uh, and then, you know, kind of, they, they, I'm at the part where they're kind of getting into the MCU a little bit and like bring it, like we talked about like 2015, where Ike Perlmutter in charge of Marvel proper and, and Kevin Feige, what, like they were, they're battling. So Disney had to separate them essentially to, to keep on it. And then it's even funnier because I guess this week is what the, the, the South park, uh, the Panderverse episode where they talk about having the Pander stone to create the same generic movies over and over again. Disney does, which includes <laughs> like Marvel stuff. So it's, it's all very, very, very fun. And then the other, um, we'll talk about it here in a second. The other, there's another book that came up. But I, I really, if you want a history of Marvel Studios, not just MCU, not just Iron Man forward and, and all the issues we hear about now, but like all the good things and the different people, this is a really great book, Mike, uh, to talk about it. And and one of the, the um, I wrote it down here, one of the uh, Kevin Feige things, uh, one of his, uh, his mentor taught him to make decisions based on how you want the audience to feel rather than trying to overwhelm them with your artistic vision. So that kind of gives the, the through line through the book is like, you know, their Marvel is really hiring film managers and not artists, if you will. And um, they don't, they don't criticize either way. It's a historical thing, right? It's not a, a review book. It's a, this is what the facts are kind of book. So it, it's fun to kind of take that and kind of extrapolate a little bit. So I, I plan on maybe coming back or, you know, maybe, you, maybe you'll read it. I don't know. Um, get into it uh, here later whenever I get through it. But that brings me to the first point uh, is out this week, Mike, and I, I, I'm I'm probably going to get myself a copy. It's on sale at Target right now. It's Marvel Studios, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, an official timeline. What a mouthful this is. Um, but it's now in stores, and if you wanted the official timeline from Marvel proper, you can go pick it, pick it up in hard, uh, hard copy at your local bookstores. Chris, uh, this right here, this is the money making scheme right here yeah. because this timeline is constantly evolving and changing. And every mm -hmm. time there's like an edit, like they do one edit in a Google Doc, it's like, let's republish a new book. Yeah. If these nerds want the most accurate updated timeline, they're going to have to buy it. Well, so what this the book actually um, goes all the way through the start of Loki season two, Ooh. I believe. Um which is, I'm, I'm thoroughly surprised they've never released anything like this before, if you will. Um, right? Like you mentioned, you know, it's a money-making scheme, yes. But I've never, they've never released one before. Uh, but it's written by Anthony Bresnikan and Amy Rat Ratcliffe. Uh, and I, I, again, coffee table kind of book. But it's been fun to kind of go through it. They use, uh, in, in this is very relevant, uh, Miss Minutes as like a, a little, like a note taker, like an annotation thing, you know, mm -hmm. on some of the, the things. Because there's a Spider-Man Homecoming starts with a, a thing eight years ago, right, uh, in that movie. It literally mm -hmm. was four years ago when you do all the math. They were like, Miss Minutes like, we don't know how this got past us. This was definitely a mess up. And then they move on. Like, there's no, like, explaining. <laughs> a, like, they don't have to explain a way that you're they're like, yeah, we goofed. We get it. We like we don't have to try to we don't have to do the reverse math to make this fit. We know we messed up, uh, kind of thing. So I, I think that's that's interesting. And and this would be I'd be I would be keen to know, Mike. Will the Disney Plus or whoever Spider Man is owned by Sony? When it comes to Disney, do you think they'll change that title card to match this book going forward? Like, cause, oh, cause Disney is known that, to change things in their movies, right? When it's yeah, that that's true. I don't know. I would think uh, the probability would be higher if it technically didn't have like Sony's fingerprints on it, right? right? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that there's some sort of yeah. clause that that stops them from editing it, yeah. like kind of because it's like messing with distribution, which is kind of like a whole part of the deal, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It'd just be interesting. But I, this, I, I have not uh, had a chance to get my hands on this book, but um, I'm very excited to read it. There's been a lot of articles. Um, you know, so the Spider-Man one obviously was was one of the big ones, but I'm excited to do it. And you know, I I would hope that you know, if I was going to be completely honest, Mike, if I was the person doing this, I would do this every phase, right? Like every MCU quote unquote phase they have planned out, 
be like, okay, mm-hmm. here it is. Um, and here's how it works. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see if anything actually comes out of this kind of going, going forward. Um, before I get into the next topic, actually, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a new to- new topic in here. Mike, Spider-Man 2. Can I, t- can I tell you why this is in here? Uh, Please, because wax poetically. Are we talking Spider-Man the 2, game. the movie, Spider-Man 2, the other movie, Spider-Man 2, the other other movie, or Spider-Man 2, the video game, or Spider-Man 2, the other other video the, game? The, the, the other 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 video game, actually. There you go. Okay. The new one that just came out, and uh, we talked about last week, uh, in most most of our show, I, I beat the campaign. I had, a, I had a, a little extra time this week whenever I got back from traveling, and I beat the campaign of this game. Like, I'm not here to spoil it. I'm not here to tell you, anybody anything about this game except i as someone who does our show notes weekly mike um mm-hmm. i i see a lot more information than i probably than the normal person would or would want to see right on details and i was still surprised throughout this game uh playing it so i i just want to say despite what you may think of, you know about this game don't, don't read anything but like what you may know they they have some really fun curveballs in here mike that i i cannot wait to talk to you about uh talk That's to you great. with whenever you it. get there um, uh, and, um, the other part I didn't know, so there's a bunch of, uh, suits, uh, right? You unlock the suits as you level up in the game and then you mm-hmm. do submissions and you unlock other suits. They're actually suits for the pre-order, the, the adult, digital deluxe edition that are not in here unless you buy them. And that's like the most disappointing part about this, n- knowing this, like there's like the spider, their, their version of a spider punk outfit, right? Um, that's mm-hmm. only in the digital deluxe version. You don't actually unlock it playing it. Uh, I thought you just unlocked it early uh, by mm-hmm. doing that, but they actually did lock some suits behind a paywall. So, oh boy, yeah, kind of kind of disappointing. But um, very excited. Uh, hopefully, you know, um, I don't I don't expect anyone to rush to beat this game. I did not expect to beat it in the first week. I just had a lot of extra time and stayed up way too late one night. Uh, shouldn't have been doing that. So um, <laughs> absolutely, uh, absolutely blast. Hopefully everyone can. I think they said it's like one of the highest selling Spider-Man games ever. Uh, so doing doing the work for Sony out there. But in Spider-Man movie wise proper, uh, yeah, this is some some notes that kind of came out this week um, through one of those reliable scoopers. But Sony will not let Marvel use Black Cat in any of their movies. And that is why she has not appeared in the current three iterations that we've seen in the MCU. Well, it seems like there's always like some sort of rumored like Amazon Prime project or black movie and sil- out silver there. and black or whatever. Like it was we're called. gonna whip out Black Cat. The funny thing is, is like I like Black Cat is a very top tier character. I would say within the world of Spider Man, you know, once you kind of get past the iconic villains right you know you got to go to the supporting like heroes and like black cat is usually up there right yeah. but uh, not really a big box office taker i would say for sure like uh, i think some th- i think depending on whatever lore whatever comic book universe that you're in i think black cat sometime is like super powered sometimes not just kind of like in a like a thief kind of like um cat woman a little bit in in Batman, but yeah, they're really holding on yeah. to that character, not doing anything with it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think, you know, um, the closest we've gotten to a black cat, um, there was a Felicia Hardy in the amazing Spider-Man two, uh, played by the actress who was in rogue one, man, she's in rogue one. But, um, I always think of, I always think of Batman, the dark Knight rises, the third one, mm-hmm. in the film, who had, uh, Anne Hathaway play like the cat woman who was more of a mm-hmm. black cat version of, of this. So I was like, man, that'd be it's really disappointing. We don't get something similar in this, but hopefully um, Sony's like, yeah, we can, we can loosen up on this character and not have to worry about creating a uh, solo property for, for someone like that. Uh, the other part of this, the, I say the bigger rumor of this is that Andrew Garfield is rumored to make a return in other Spider-Man projects. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me as much now that maybe that has been accelerated because after he was in uh, No Way Home mm-hmm. and they've also included that kind of live action clip of him in Spider-Verse 2, th- they see that the there's a desire out there for an audience. Like right. The audience is clamoring for more Andrew Garfield. 
Uh, but that's it's it's a it's a vocal minority, right? I'm not saying it in a sense of like it's a bad minority, but yeah. I don't think Andrew Garfield as Spider Man is gonna push box office dollars like a Tom Holland Spider Man's going to do. So it's this seems to me like a ploy where you use him to maybe juice a third Venom movie yeah. or juice whatever villain crossover movie that they're going to do. Maybe, uh, maybe put him in Secret know. Wars, give him to Marvel again. Like, hey, you want another Andrew? garfield cameo in your in your your movies marvel yeah um here's the thing i don't think andrew garfield was a bad spider-man um or peter parker i just think that second movie of his with the green goblin and electro the you know setting black cat setting up all the other villains got really out of control and Mm -hmm. um if the next movie was going to be him riding a t-rex in the sinister six that we talked about last (laughs) week uh, i'm so glad we didn't get that whoever was in charge at the time just did not quite understand you know spider-man right they were selling franchise they were selling toys so i think he's a he he, having him in there would be fun but like you mentioned i don't think that we're going to do amazing spider-man 3 right i don't think that's on the on the table do you no no I, i don't think so it's too I mean, they're they're going to be cannibalizing their own Spider-Man movie franchise. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Mar- the MCU is kind of in charge of it in a way, but it's not like Sony's not getting money out of it. Right. So yeah, like like I said, I think it would be like a a movie, for example, probably the easiest example. They would just call the movie Sinister Six, and then Spider-Man's in the trailer. You know, he's on the poster, he's in it, but like it's technically not a Spider-Man movie. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And, and this is also, I, mean, I have my, I have my hair notes. He is not replacing Tom Holland. Tom Holland will continue in his Spider-Man movies because his, you know, trilogy kind of set him up to do his own little thing. Um, so, so absolutely. I, I think, you know, um, Spider-Man as a, the characters and as a franchise in Sony's hands is always a big um, question mark. Like, Hey, do we trust them? Sometimes. Yes. Sometimes no, Mike. Uh, so, uh, this is I want to I want to chalk this up as a we don't know yet right uh, maybe it could be good but you know with uh, Craven on the horizon and uh, oh Mad- Madam Web which uh, we actually did not get a trailer for Mike disappointingly it means it's probably not gonna hit that January date so um, I, I think this is maybe something we could possibly look forward to down the road uh, let's jump into the Marvel world a little bit there was a, a little uh, teaser this week uh, a, a scary hallow stream disney plus promotion showing off uh really spooky quote unquote spooky things from marvel right the mcu but they were like mm. really cutting comedy moments and then like, making it look creepy like the ant drumming the the rock band drums from the, the second ant-man movie like that's not creepy in the movie right like it's a mm-hmm. funny moment um or ant-man like you know uh with the ants like yes yeah, it's a little scary but like it's still ant-man we know it's a comedy movie so they're cutting all this creepy looking things together for hell stream but the end of this teaser mike shows a very very large chain coming across the screen as a transition and mm-hmm. the only character i can think of you know who uses a chain almost ex- exclusively in marvel is ghost rider and people are trying to think maybe, and he's scary. He's obviously a, uh, a demon invested biker with a flaming helmet. So people are like, well, does this, is this chain? And it's even on the preview right there of the, uh, the thumbnail here, right on Twitter is, are they trying to set up uh, or tease a ghost rider thing in the future or, or, or trying to gauge interest? What do you think is going on with a chain when there's no other chains in this whole trailer, nor does anyone else use a chain in Marvel? Yeah, it's weird. I feel like the the biggest um, the biggest split here is like obviously this video to me seems like something that's made from like like a marketing department, yep. you know, out of out of uh, Marvel. You need a and, you need a holiday video for Halloween. What can you come up with? It, yeah, it's like I, I highly doubt the masterminds of the story universe are inside of this. You know, yeah. it's just like you know the Disney Plus. You know department putting this together so is somebody just like oh let's just put a chain in there because it's kind of like you know it's it's spooky right and it will look cool and oh i just happen to have this asset in a folder so let's use it or are they just like oh let's like kind of lean into the speculation this will be really fun or maybe somebody like really really is playing like like next level chess there i don't know but it is it, it's very it's it's, inter- it, it's really yeah. funny when this stuff just kind of plays with us you know yeah and and i to me i think the editor 
or the you know the person doing the, the graphics is like you know what would really get everyone talking i'm just gonna throw this in here and see if anyone tells me to change it because <laughs> i want i want it to come because again it, the, the chain does look like a plugin you would buy off a website right it's not like it's a flaming chain or or ghost rider you don't hear a motorcycle it's very generic and blank so you know, take with it as you will but i thought that was a very again what after watching it and watching it kind of from an editor's point of view i'm like this is a really weird thing to just throw here at the end of this video when you yeah, didn't use I mean, it, in it any, anywhere else at all. Yeah, and also, like, they have all of the little, uh, like, logos here at the end for all of the different properties. None of them prominently feature, like, a chain in any way. It is a very out-of-place asset, right? Yeah. You know, I suppose a chain can be spooky, and but, like, in the context of, like, the MCU, like, <laughs> there's no, there's it, nothing to chain, it, you know? A chain is spooky when it's paired with something spooky, like ghosts, shackled, right? Shackled ghosts. Yeah. I always think Christmas because of the Marley Brothers. But, like, uh, yeah, like, it's just, it's someone is either doing this on purpose or was just like, you know, we'll just throw it at the end see if anybody notices. Maybe maybe the people who are proofreading this don't check the whole video, Mike. They're like, well, we, we trust you in the last five seconds. So, uh, but, yeah, it's just really... To me, it's funny because it's a lot of extrapolation for nothing at the end of the day. But you know, what do we, what do we know, Mike? We just do a show every week. We we're not <laughs> we're not making the decisions over there. The Fantastic Four movie is uh, something I think a lot of people are waiting for, right? Uh, and it come to Marvel, the 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 first opportunity to have a um, better than below average Fantastic Four movie in there. And the working title for this movie has now been revealed as being called Blue Moon. And uh, while you might think it's the name of a song from the movie Grease, it's not. It's a reference to the blue area of the moon discovered by Fantastic Four in the comics, which is where Uatu, the Watcher, lives and watches over the Earth from. So I think it's a little fun thing. Uh, I mean, the Watcher, he's got to watch everything in existence, right? Do you mm -hmm. think he just has condos on every moon across every solar system well, he, in the universe? He, yeah, possibly. He, he might. He, he has portals. Probably. Uh, you know, or probably. Earth is just so special, he had to create a standalone place on the other side of the moon. Yeah, and, and for some reason, it's a blue area, too. It's, why is it blue? There could be any, any other color. It could be the dark side of the moon, the phrase that everyone uses already. I don't know why. But one of the uh, synopsis, quote unquote synopsis for this, uh, while well, they're working on it, it's called It's Starting, the, the Fantastic Four is starting off on a grand cosmic adventure, Mike. Leaving me feeling they're not going to be on Earth very long. This might be more space space based kind of Fantastic Four movie. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean that could be interesting. I mean, I would say the maybe the biggest takeaway from this is that their powers might come from a more traditional root of mm. where they've gotten their powers in the past, right? You know, the MCU has come up with new clever ways to give people their origin powers. So I could have easily have seen like maybe it's a science experiment in a lab, or maybe. I don't know, somebody like hit a, an infinity stone with a hammer, even though they technically don't exist, but there's multiverses now. So there's many different ways they could have got their powers, but you know, this is going to be more traditional route. You know, that's good too. Yeah. And if they, if they tell it right, that's fine. Um, as well. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we don't have to know how they got their powers, right? Maybe it could start off like Spider-Man. We've seen their, I can think of three iterations since 1994 of their powers, not including the animated versions, how they got them. So maybe they maybe they already have them. Um, but the big rumor here is it's also rumored to be set in the 1960s. Now the the asterisk I'll add to this, someone has also said maybe it's a possible they're in a different multiverse of the 60s, right? They're not in the MCU proper, and they get transported here through like hopping dimensions or whatever scientific -y things are doing. Now, I'm not saying that's, now, that's false or not, but that would help explain why we've not heard about them in the MCU. Now, what what would be really cool is if, you know, we're, if they're from, like, another dimension, right? It would be cool if they were from a kind of retro future dimension, right? Mm -hmm. There's a um, there's a show on Apple TV that we never got around to finishing, but we watched a couple episodes. I think it was called Hello Tomorrow or something like that, but it was like a, a world of what if, like, the retro future that everyone predicted did come true so like all of the cars are hover cars but they all look like like 1950s like so, hot rods and stuff like that so it's like tomorrow land at disney right if, if that just was yeah. the design kind of going forward yeah exactly so that would be kind of fun is like maybe like that's where they start off in their movie in this like fun unique world and then they get like pulled into ours or something like that mm -hmm. yeah because they're known to, again three hopping through 
whatever the difference between a dimension and a universe is, we don't know yet. Uh, but there's also like you know um, the um, negative zone. There, you know, that's that was something that could feature uh, and stuff like that. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here to have fun with this. And if they do make them, you know, cross over the Fantastic Four, then they show up either in Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars, and they all merge them in later. That's still a fun way to say, hey, we don't have to alternate our old history, right? You don't have to re-release that new book just yet about the history of the MCU because they came from a different universe where uh, they, 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 and things, like you said, things look different. They kind of visually aesthetic. Uh, that's, that's different than ours. Um, Thor five I, words. I'm still not sure are, are true. Thor five <laughs> is in development at Marvel studios without Taika Waititi. Obviously, um, you know, people are, 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 are down on the, on the love and thunder. It's fine. Totally get it. Um, you know, to me, I think, I think Gore, the God butcher didn't do enough God butchering. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, Thor five is not definitely a movie I thought would be announced, especially after Bob Iger saying that they're, fo- they're they want to focus less on sequels and more on, you know, quality of films. So, uh, any, anything you can think of on Thor five, Mike, while we're, yeah, it feels like uh, it's time for Taika Waititi to kind of uh, move on in general. I mean, he's a very visionary director and creative, right? Yeah. If you look at his, you know, catalog, he's done just why he's done stuff all over the board. So I think it's kind of almost better for everyone if he kind of moves along. And it seems like he got his paycheck, he's got his money, he got his multiple vacation home paycheck out of the two Marvel projects, right? Yeah. And I, you know, and that's fine. Move along to the next thing. It- uh, our Flag Means Death is insanely popular on HBO. Uh, he's got uh, Reservation Dogs that he executive produces. I'm sure he's working on other things. He's got that, well, he's uh, got a, a, I think it's a soccer movie coming out soon. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. And I think he's actually in it as well. I think he's yeah. starring in it. So he's like a very talented person. So yeah. I'm happy he's not chained to the MCU anymore. I think he's probably happy that he's not there anymore. It, he's like he's yeah. he's just this very chaotic, like visionary. So I just want him out in Hollywood, just cross pollinating over a bunch of different things. I think that's the best route for. Yeah. Him. And, well, I, I think, you know, again, he was working uh, Thor Love and Thunder under a Bob Chapek regime. Right. Hey. Get your movie out by a deadline. It was one of the, the shorter movies. It, it had to come out. It had to get out there and do something. And I think Thor as a character, the different iterations, the different versions, would he, he benefits from someone else comes in and says, this is what I want to do with Thor, right? And kind of not reinvents him, but like kind of refocuses him on the whole. So um, I, I like I like Chris Hemsworth. I think, you know, we give him Thor 5 and then we sunset him, right? You know, this is... Thor 5 could be his last outing, and I would be totally fine with Thor. The The character I thought would have no more than two movies. Getting five is, is blowing my mind right now. So, mm-hmm. um, But he also wasn't in he wasn't in Civil War either. Uh, so um, he kind of got a little bit of the shaft in Age of Ultron. So, yeah, they're probably making it. But I think one more Thor movie, Mike, and I'm, I'm, I'm good, right? We don't need any more. Chris Hemsworth after that. Well, th- we could have more Chris Hemsworth. I'm not saying I'm, I, I'm against him, but let, let him go out on good terms. Give him one really mm. good outing on the way out. So I don't know who I'd want to put in charge of this. I, 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 you know, thinking of names, I was trying to think of something. I'm like, you know, who, who do you, who do you give Thor to? And then I was like, I honestly, I couldn't tell you any directors right now that would probably sign up for Marvel, let alone do a Thor movie. Mm-hmm. So maybe we can get a Wes, uh, Wes Anderson Thor movie, you know, really, <laughs> really, that would be wild. Yeah, we really, really have fun with it. Uh, the Marvels movie, Mike. You know, you, we actually talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, the movie uh, is coming out uh, November tenth, and the embargo for this review is, is a little lifting. A, a little, the social reactions are one day. The, the actual reviews are a little closer. The week of review. And um, this is to protect story spoilers. And you were like, I bet you know, you're like. Probably not, but I know what the story spoiler is, um, and it's wild, Mike. It's going to blow your mind, and I cannot wait to talk to you about it if this does come true. Now, again, I, I mark everything with a rumor. I'm not telling anybody anything, but uh, it, it's I, I can't fathom this even happening, Mike, and, and that's why I want to see if it comes true or not for this. Well, so I remember you were telling me about this uh, in our DMs, if you will, Yeah, and you were telling me a catastrophic event a big a big story point huge spoiler so I, I i ran to my phone 
and made sure I had my tickets secured for Captain Marvel because I hadn't yep. gotten them yet. So I got those for Thursday night. So hopefully any spoiler I can avoid on that end. Uh, but also it, it reminded me of I saw like a headline and I don't know how out of context this quote was or maybe even how old the quote was from Brie Larson. And I never even fact checked it. So it goes to show you that I'm not a journalist. But it, it, the, the sum of it was is Brie Larson is kind of sick and tired of playing Captain Marvel oh, that, that, because of that's from the MCU book I was talking about earlier, the reign of Marvel Studios, uh, whenever they were talking about uh, when Bob Chapek took over. Mm-hmm. So that that, so, that yeah. quote is from from Bob Chapek's era, where they were like they didn't have any direction after her movie, right? What have we seen yeah, her so. really do in there? So I, absolutely, yeah. So maybe the ship has been righted there, but my my dark my super dark horse prediction, uh, since you kind of put this in my ear, is she dies in her own movie and she's done. Uh, so well, that, that's going to be my that's going to be my random out there guess, and we'll we'll check uh, back in in a couple yeah, weeks yeah, we'll, see if I'm right. We'll check and, and and just I mean I'm not. I'm not confirming or denying you because I would never tell you what it is. But mm-hmm. um, the the thing it's called the Marvels. It's not Captain Marvel two. So technically, mm-hmm. you could literally have the other two and still be the Marvels. Just don't have to. We've there. still technically made a plural yeah. in this by the end of the movie. Yeah. Well, there will be three. There's three, and there'll be two left. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the end credits supposedly tie into Phase Six, and um, this is one of the other things I did read in this. If it is true. Um, come from. I'm just. I just can't even. Like right now. I. I, I, can't, I, mean, I don't even want to talk about it because I'm like, <laughs> no one's gonna believe I, me if I said it right now. So that's why I want to talk about it later. I mean, I do have to say, I feel like it's been a minute since I've watched something in the Marvel universe where I feel like there has been like some sort of catastrophic like. Mm-hmm change or like big red flag if you will right like i thought doctor strange and the multiverse of madness was just going to be like whoa this is insane and crazy but like by the end of the movie things were kind of like wrapped up and like mm-hmm. oh there might be an incursion oh. you know that was about it yeah i yeah don't yeah i was saying, i didn't know if i said anything catastrophic either so don't don't hold me to that but yes th- there's something in here that i've never would thought would happen ever in the mcu so just All right. just gonna gonna say right there and um you know l- I, I I don't know if you're caught up on Loki, Mike, and we're not here to talk about Loki. But um, the the more I'm watching the newest episode, the newest season of Loki, um, the more I'm seeing how many of those seeds or, or likenesses were in, set up in Ant Man and Quantum Mania. Even though the movie didn't really deliver on all fronts, I can mm-hmm. see those seeds being set in that movie for something in Phase Six, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. including, I don't know, I think we mentioned on the show, what Kang was making in Quantumania was a loom, like a small loom, mm-hmm. um, to control the timeline and how they're making that in the Loki show. But um, I'm, I'm very excited for that show. This should wrap up in two episodes. So uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you're caught up. I don't want to assume anything. We're saying spoilers in here, but um, we had two episodes of that. So I think there's, the seeds are finally, Phase 5 didn't have any. Phase 6 is starting to plant or like give us more of this multiversal thing kind of going forward. So we'll knock on wood young Avengers. I didn't think they'd ever make a movie and I don't know if this is still true or not, but the rumor is the plan they're going to shoot a young Avengers film next year, even though it has not, it is one of those blanks in phase six that was never announced. Remember when everything was changed. So, um, do you think we're going to get a young Avengers film? I mean, uh, right now I'm googling Young Avengers MCU because I'm just looking for one of those uh, one of those uh, collages, trying to see. I, I can't keep track of all these young kids all the time. Right, right. right. Well, it, so. I mean, it, I mean it, again, some of them may not be met, but obviously we have Kate Bishop from Hawkeye. We have Miss mm-hmm. Marvel. Um, my guess is they're probably going to use the 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 Maximoff kids from Wandavision. Um, yeah, they could bring them in. Uh, they could do. It looks like I'm seeing. Cassie Lang, right? Was oh, yep, that, was yep, that yep. his daughter's name? Yep, yep. Uh, stature, if you will, uh, from from mm-hmm. that. Um, young, I think I think it's you know fantastic idea. It's a great audience. They've not really done a younger person's movie, right? Like a like an age down version of this movie yet. So, be interesting to see it. I just hope it has a good plot point, like a purpose. What is the purpose yeah, of I Young mean- Avengers? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say if you're somebody out there that just thinks like, oh, can this like kind of younger cast, you know, bring an interesting story? I mean, the animated uh, Young Justice series was mm-hmm. great. I love the stories that they were telling over there. Teen so. Titans had a, had a great show. I mean, I, I think I think it can, um, but just doing it because we have the Young Avengers, like enough characters to make a Young Avengers team is, is weird mm-hmm. to me. Or not weird. Just 
I, I trust that Bob Iger says he's working on quality. Please make <laughs> this be a quality film and not something that they have to do, right? Yes, kind that's true. So. Because because we still have to get through a couple different movies and series, you know, that have kind of already been started before the 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 pledge of quality was kind of hoisted yeah. into the air, right? Yeah. So uh, this one should theoretically fall under that umbrella, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and I do, I do. You know, again, hope so. And Young Avengers, I get nothing. The comic books um, for Marvel, for DC, as you mentioned, the anime shows, there, there are plenty of good things. You can make really good stuff with um, the younger younger crews. But I think also using the name Avengers is a, um, to me, is a sticking point, right? We've not had an Avengers. Avengers are supposed to be, you know, uh, tentpole films, event films now is what we're saying. I, I get that they're called Young Avengers, but, like, don't use Young Avengers. Is there another name we can call them that fits better? in this situation, right? Kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. like Titans teen, and Teen Titans or Teenage Avengers. No, stop the using Avengers. Guys. Stop using Avengers. <laughs> yeah. Little guy. That's what they already used that for Ant Man. He was a little guy. That's his book. <laughs> um you know, but um Yeah, anyway, so this movie's possibly uh playing to shoot next year and it's one of those unannounced phase six films. I think um again movies are gonna again we're gonna see a maybe not a decline, but a less series on disney plus and more movies or not more movies but like you know just keep the same movies yeah anyway daredevil born again we had a big uh there's a big expose on this a couple weeks ago right we talked about it quite a bit mm-hmm. on the show uh dario scardapane or scardapaning I, I can't pronounce his name don't know it who was a uh, showrunner for or at least maybe writer right, for the punisher netflix series and jack ryan is now the the tv showrunner for daredevil born again mike uh, I mean, Punisher, great sign. We watched like one and a half seasons, I would say, of Jack Ryan, and we were having, you know, we were having a good time, right? Yep. Um, I feel like it, we we want strong stories here, and they were at least strong in Punisher, that's for sure. So mm-hmm. that's great. And, and again, uh, the promise is they want someone in TV, right? Someone who has the ability to work in TV. They're not hiring film executives. This guy has worked on TV series before. Um, mm-hmm. Again, for Netflix and Amazon, uh, high budget things. He has experience. He can bring this to the table. So that they've at least kept to that phrase, the, the, what they said they were going to do commitment to do that. They've also hired Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, who are um, directors of Loki, including the, uh, I think all of season two and some of season one uh, for the remaining episodes as well. So the yeah. the remaining stuff that they they're going to use some of the original stuff, but what they're going to rearrange and serialize some, they're going to be filming that for us or directing it. Yeah, I feel like we got some good pedigree here, right? Yeah, and so as, that's good. As we always say on the show, um, usually when there's a team of somebody, we usually get the best content. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, again, you didn't confirm or deny your cup of Loki, but that show from a directing point of view it was visually beautiful. They're yeah. getting great. They're great performances out of their actors. I, I cannot complain one bit. Yeah, still one one episode behind, but yeah. nearly caught up, and yeah. it is fantastic. Yes, I'm very I'm very excited for you to watch the new one, Mike. Um, and I only say this because I saw looking up the, these guys, Justin Benson, Aaron Moorhead. The latest episode of Loki in season two, episode four, is the highest rated episode of the show on IMDb Ooh. so far for both seasons. <laughs> so um, very excited for that. That that just to show they are doing great work. The directors are. Um, also, this was separate from this note. Uh, the, those those two things are facts. This is rumor. Jessica Jones is rumored to return in the show again with Kristen Ritter. Uh, it was kind of up in the air whether they would bring some of these people back. Uh, I've I've recently been talking to someone at work. I could really, I I would take everyone back but Finn Jones. I don't want <laughs> that Iron Fist back ever again. <laughs> So yeah, it, unfortunately, I don't even think a, a multiversal shift could could help that out. Yeah, and it was like, oh, he was he was just fine. I'm like, I'm I'm sure he's a great person, a great actor, but um, he didn't know martial arts, know how to fight. Like we have Shang Chi as the MCU standard for kung fu now, right? Like fighting, mm-hmm. uh, that guy could barely you know punch his way out of a an office room. Uh, if he had a hallway fight scene, the hallway would win. Is what I'm just, <laughs> just saying out there. But um, uh, Jessica Jones, um, she's last seen in the MCU in season three of her own Netflix show, right? Uh, Jessica Jones season three. And she's currently uh, in an Orphan Black spinoff show. They have filmed it. I don't know if it's released That's yet true. or not. Um, but I don't think it's out yet. But she she has her own Orphan Black where she plays all the characters, all the clones. So, um pretty pretty that's that's good news, right? I, I no one no yeah. one disliked her. She got three seasons, so 
Uh, Blade, uh, according to uh, what we saw at the top of the show, the rumor of the new upcoming Blade movie uh, is that will be set in the 1920s, Mike. Which did not see that coming, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, I mean that'd be really cool, right? Because uh, Blade is a character who can just persist through time, so we don't really have to worry necessarily about time travel of the character, mm-hmm. right? So this kind of brings me back to the thing I always bring up with Blade is what's the explanation when it comes to like monsters existing. I mean, we kind of touched on that a little bit in Werewolf by Night of like this legacy of kind of monster hunters. So they seem to just exist and be out there in the world. Maybe the reason why modern times doesn't talk about them that much is because like Blade and, you know, similar ilk do a really good job, I guess, at hunting the demons and keeping them at bay. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And and that's, you know, that'd be interesting. I, what I, I really want between this and fantastic four, what we're getting are period pieces, right. Uh, And and this Mm. sort of sounds like, and I love that idea. Something visually different than, modern day New York is going to be great for me because I just can't stand looking at modern day cities uh, in, in these things. So having 1920s, no, there's no technology. He's going to have to be designing his own weapons, right? Like using the blades or using things that, you know, are just not visibly, they are not, not feasible back then. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, the main villain is rumored to be Lilith. I think we've talked about this before. Um, the, the actress who's in X and Pearl, um, I forget her name. Uh, she signed up for the movie, and she's rumored to be Lilith, who is the mother of demons, and most recently played uh, the main villain in the Midnight Suns game that came out. Uh, I want to say last fall, last last fall, uh, about a year yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, that that squarely kind of puts this in supernatural realm for sure. I mean, traditionally we see Blade teamed up strictly in a vampire world, mm-hmm. so this kind of broadens it a little bit more. Yep. I, I'm okay with that. The other rumor, and I don't have it here. This was a while back. Was that it was going to be set in Europe as well, right? So maybe you know, we, we when we I think when we talked about why vampires, demons, and stuff are not in Americas because they've always kind of kept them in that European nations kind of thing. Um, they so, were too scared of boats. Yeah. I mean, they're just like, yeah, I'm a bat, I can fly, but like, I you know, I'm not sure about boats yet. They had to wait till they invented some <laughs> some better they were some better boating technology. They're they afraid crossed. of scurvy, Mike. You, you yeah, don't, that's what it is. You, you know, vampires can't come back from scurvy. Um, but I've not also watched the last voyage of the Demeter, which is like that Nosferatu movie where he's, yeah. he's in the boat. But mm-hmm. um, I, I, I'm excited for Blade. We've been talking about it for four years now, a little over four years um, since the official announcement. Uh, we've gone through writers and directors, and, and you're right now um, writers are back on, so you know, good for them. Hopefully, they can be working on this. Uh, well, the actors are not. Um, you know, uh, they don't have a resolution to the strike yet, but I think this will be fun. I- I'm excited for Blade, Mike, and if it's set in the 1920s, I look forward to seeing that uh, come come to fruition. But speaking of kind of, I guess this kind of falls in the same thing as like Blade, specters, you know, demons, gods, whatever is, is Moon Knight, right? We ha- we saw Moon Knight uh, last year, and it's finally rumored to get a, a season two. And then, as always, as we were promised uh, going forward on these TV shows, Moon Knight will also show up in the upcoming Avengers movies, Mike. Well, I'm just hoping Moon Knight gets the same treatment that all of these other new projects are getting because I want a better yeah. second season of Moon Knight. It started off so strong for me, but I, so I'm still the taste of my mouth for Moon Knight is sour. Oscar Isaac, I love Oscar Isaac. No complaints on that front, so that's okay. But no. I just want something a little bit more I, coherent. I, I'm I'm looking forward to Moon Knight. I, I like how again more isolated it is. Right, like again, it doesn't. If you watch it by itself, it doesn't have to connect to anything, and they never say it connects to anything, which is a fun. But um, the the character himself, he's got a lot of potential, a lot of promise, right? Uh, and then also with the multiple characters and the uh, with the the Jake Lockley character, I believe we were introduced to at the end there, right? His gangster persona um would love to to get more into this and the the psyche of moon knight and and how he not necessarily possesses but but connects with the character but absolutely i think uh visually also moon knight great character to look at right that costume they they had for that show nailed it um Mm -hmm. so i want to see more of that come up here but yes season two uh again if they're promising tv showrunners and serialization hopefully they are able to again pull that 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 bar up a little bit with them uh, last uh, Marvel bit of news here is Iron Man will apparently appear in the MCU before the MCU reboot that we've just discussed about after Secret Wars. 
So yeah, it does. It it's weird. Yes. Right? It, it's hard. <laughs> It's it's weird from a sense of like what an amazing send off the character had in um, in um, Infinity, Infinity War. Infinity War. In game. Uh, in game. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, man, all of that uh, uh, rumor, rumor and build up to the name of that second uh, part two, and I can't even remember it anymore. Yeah. Um, but what an amazing send off. Absolutely perfect, right? So. But also at the same time, if you're co- also going to do this kind of like secondary send off to the kind of the original class, I guess, a kind of Saved by the Bell style of the mm-hmm. MCU. It does kind of seem like seeing Robert Downey Jr. again yeah. would kind of be like a nice kind of like yeah. bow at the end. But it's they got to do it so perfectly well, that if they just yeah. mess it up, I'm just going to be mad. Let me go ahead and tell you, um, the fact you're assuming this Robert Downey Jr. probably means you're wrong. Um, my guess is it's going to be... Uh, the, the the what we did not get in Doctor Strange, but it was very highly rumored, was a Tom Cruise version, right, of the Superior Iron Man. Would you be upset if it's a variant universe Tony Stark who was not Robert Downey Jr.? Well, I think if they're if if they if they construct a scene right where a bunch of heroes pop up on the screen, the audience is freaking out because like, wait a minute, there's a cat. Like maybe they start from like the, a chest down type of shot, right? Yeah. Think Superman at the end of the first Shazam movie, mm-hmm. right? So we're seeing like an Iron Man suit, a Captain America suit, you know, Black Widow, right? All of these other characters, and then it pans up and they're like all different actors. That would be kind of, I think that would be kind of like fun and interesting. And then there's some sort of explanation. Maybe the watcher is down there like, oh, the, or like a TVA agent is explaining all of these multiple like universes stuff. That could be, that could be kind of fun. So if you're going to use just the Iron Man suit, that's a little different. Well, I I mean, it could be someone. I think if they talk about like all these rumored characters have always played Iron Man, especially it's always Tom Cruise, always Tom Cruise. And he might do it, uh, you know, for a send off. But I think it's not a TVA agent. What if it's Deadpool pointing out all these things? Instead, because we know he's going to be a big part of, you know, Secret Wars that we've talked about. Um, mm-hmm. What if it's Deadpool saying like, oh, my, you know, oh, my God, it's Iron Man, but not the one, you know, kind of thing. like he is the guy who's going to be the one pointing this stuff out. Now, mm-hmm. I I agree if it is the reboot reboot and there's a maybe a, is it is it a hologram or is it, you know, another Robert Downey Jr. variant from another universe of Iron Man? He if they do it right and he's like doing the send off because he was the first one and. He'll be the last one of this 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 nice tight universe. I think that would be fun, or interesting, right? You know, poignant, if you will. Uh, on on on, he's the first and the last we see, but it's not going to be the same one, right? He, you're mm-hmm. right. He did a very good job, but by the time they reboot it, guess what? That'll be like almost ten years after we saw him die again. You know, in mm-hmm. two, 20, 28, uh, when whenever or twenty twenty seven, possibly later. If things keep getting delayed as they are, but like you know. I think enough time would have passed to bring him back again. Wouldn't feel like a cash in. It would be like, oh, you you guys remember? You've been with us for twenty years. You remember Iron Man, right? Um, kind of deal. So there's, I think there's opportunity to do both in this. Um, if done, like you mentioned, if done right, we don't want it to be just like a quick cash in kind of deal. So, um, and in Secret Wars, if it splits into two movies, even better, even more time with these characters, right? We get some quality time with them, but. Anyway, that was I thought Iron Man. A rumor that Iron Man will show up, or at least a variant of Iron Man will show up before him, would be uh, would be wild. As we talked about at the top of the show, uh, Lanterns. Uh, Chris Mundy, uh, who's uh, the showrunner of Ozark, has been tapped to be the showrunner of Lanterns, the hmm. upcoming Green Lantern show uh, set in the Gun Saffron verse. And then, again, just a reminder: this this show will focus on Hal Jordan, um, who is older by I think about maybe they said maybe. 10, 20 years than John Stewart, who's they're normally portrayed as the same age, but they're going to set up a, an age dynamic for the show and the characters. And uh, as another another reminder, Nathan Fillion will appear as Guy Gardner in Superman Legacy, the orange haired bull cut Green Lantern with an anger problem. So, <laughs> uh, I, again, big fan of Green Lanterns. I, I hope this goes out. Mike, any any ideas? I, I never watched I'm, Ozark, did you? I, I don't... I mean, o, I never watched it, but I know it was one of those really successful Netflix shows. So successful that it made it past the three-season kind of death kill yeah. uh, mark. So, I mean, that's got to be that's gotta be a good sign. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, great great showrunner, and uh, I've, only, I've only heard good things. Uh, not, and that's, that's our DC news. So we're going to jump into a little bit of mix here. Highlander, the reboot. Um, have you ever watched the Highlander movies, Mike? 
No, I ha- I'm familiar with the concept. There can be only one, right? Um, <laughs> so um, the first movie uh, told a good story. The second one retcon fucking everything. Uh, <laughs> it went it's only downhill from there. TV show I heard was good. Uh, but there, uh, the movie's moving forward with John Selesky, who is director of John Wick, uh, um, directing, and Henry Cavill starring as uh, Connor McLeod. Uh, wow. Uh, it's an, it'll be a modern te- retelling reboot of the original movie, uh, which is, you know, had Sean Connery in the original one. You know, the idea of there's Highlanders, you have abilities, you have to behead the other ones, and you get their power. And then when it's only one, you get to make, you know, the ultimate wish, I guess. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, I think I've recently downloaded a bunch of the Highlander movies because I watched them all years ago. Um, boy, do they get schlocky uh, later <laughs> on. Um, but so if you're looking for some schlocky action films, go check those out uh, if you want. And then lastly, a surprising bit of news here. Did you ever watch the Samaritan movie last year with Sylvester Stallone on Amazon Prime? The most I watched from it is one of those visual effects artist react videos. They did a couple scenes from this movie and they were kind of uh, roasting them, I guess, pun intended, over some of the fire effects in, in one of the in one of the shots. So I, I can't extrapolate much out of that when it comes to quality, but uh, yeah, I, I remember we talked about this, and I was like, why Why would anyone watch this? <laughs> yeah, so he's essentially a, a – Sylvester Stallone plays a, a quote-unquote retired superhero. Everyone thought he died like 20 years ago uh, fighting his like nemesis, and you know he's just kind of – I think he's picking up – like he's a trash man for like, the city or something. And then he has to help like a kid finds out who he is, and he has to end up saving the kid down the road. Sits at a 38% of Rotten Tomatoes. Now, mind you, we don't – we don't use Rotten Tomatoes as a, as a basis for everything, but from a critical standpoint, 38%, not very good, Mike. Uh, currently higher than Five Nights at Freddy's if you want to really be topical with today's <laughs> movie. Um, but apparently it found an audience with viewers because Amazon has uh, greenlit a sequel to this. Wow. Prime. That is uh, that is definitely an analytics-driven choice, right? They know exactly through their AWS metrics, right? Yeah. Uh, who watched it and for how long? And how- is this a demographic that we are desperately trying to keep around? Uh, or maybe they're just like, hey, the budget just works out. We can we can crank this out, and all we got to do is sell a few more back to school binders the, or something. Well, the other thing is a, a, a produced, not executive produced, a straight produced by Sylvester Stallone, and and part of his uh, production company means that maybe maybe they're using is is are people watching Stallone movies right with Expendables four coming out and all the rocks like are people watching his movies and his, he's still a name. And if he's like, yeah, I want to do this movie, and they're like, all right, well, we have the data that says you're still a popular action star. Let's go with it kind of thing. Um, I I never watched it. Uh, I know uh, someone who actually wrote a comic book very, very similar uh, to this uh, years and years ago. So I I, I think I even mentioned that on the show. So, you know, kudos for him, and hopefully he sells more more books. But I'm very, very baffled why this one's getting a sequel of all the movies in the world, of all the properties. (laughs) So... Um, but I guess to show you streaming. That's that's the way it works in the in streams. Well, Mike, that is the show for this week. Uh, if people want to know uh, what you're doing, what you're up to, where can they find all them goodies at? Yeah, if they want to find my um, web comics, all you got to do is visit uh, liferewardsrisk.com or pickledcomics.com. Check out all of my uh, funny little musings over there. Chris, if people want to find you, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram, Valdan87, V-A-L-D-A-N, or on video game systems with the same name. Uh, doing that. If people want to know more about our show, what we're doing, our next review episode, I believe, is The Marvels, actually. Uh, get ready for that, or listen to our regularly scheduled weekly episodes. Where can they find all them goodies at? Oh, all you got to do is visit SuperheroSlate.com. That is the uh, alternate universe where you can find every link to every show we've ever done, our awesome upcoming release calendar. Uh, head on over to SuperheroSlate.com. We're on uh, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to find podcasts. And you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Please reach out. Let us know if you are one of the select few that watched the Samaritan on Amazon Prime and if you're clamoring for a sequel, I would love to know. Uh and we love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of the show, all you gotta do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week, folks. That's right. We will see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe.